m instead. So the problem with the left hand side approach is that it's not, um, it, it doesn't give you unambitious results. So your, your results are, can be um, ambiguous. They are not unique. Depending on what you use as the left hand side variables. So therefore, the authors propose a right hand side approach. Yeah? And let's now go briefly through how to implement this approach. And this approach is actually very, very similar to what we have just discussed, which you will see. So we talked already about the issue that you have uh, two types of right-hand side approaches. Yeah, you have the approach where you have nested models and you have the other approach where you compare or where you choose um, among non-nested models. Yeah. What does it mean a model is nested? Okay, let's say you have the cat M. The cat M has the market factor. That's right now, market factor is MKT. Market factor is of course always in excess form. Market factor at time T. Oh, actually we can just skip the index, we don't need the time index now. So the cap M includes the market factor. The following French three factor model contains the market factor, the size factor, SMB, small minus big, and the value factor, which is often abbreviated as HML, high minus low book to market ratio. So here we can say that the cap M nests in the Farmer and French three factor model. Because the Farmer and French three factor model is nothing else than the cap M plus two additional variables. Okay? Or factors. In the pricing research, we don't talk about variables, we talk about factors, okay? But it's the same thing. On the other hand, if we have now, if you want to investigate the Farmer and French five factor model, the five factor model contains the market factor, the size factor, SMB, the value factor, HML, plus we have the profitability factor, which is abbreviated RMW, which means robust minus weak profitability, uh, which is a basically a portfolio that invests or that buys, that has on the long leg firms that have a high profitability, that are robust, and we are shorting this position or we financing this position by shorting stocks that have a weak profitability, uh, that have a low profitability. But since, you know, high minus low we have already here for the value factor, we need R and W, you know, otherwise we would have the same rival twice. So, and then we have, in addition to that, we have the so-called CMA factor. Yeah? Conservative minus aggressive investing uh, stocks. Yeah? So, conservative in, uh, investing companies are companies that have a low asset growth in the previous period, over the previous year. Um, and, uh, and aggressive investing stocks that are those stocks or those companies that have a high asset growth or that have invested a lot in the previous period. So if we now compare, if you want to compare the three factor model against the five factor model, we can say that the three factor model nests in the five factor model because it contains the same variables, right? Here. It contains the same variables, but has in addition two more. So if we just delete these two, we end up with the same model. So whenever a model incorporates all the factors or variables of the other model, then they are nested. Okay? In this case, we are using or we would apply a test for nested models, okay?
So and how would we proceed? How would we test for nested models? So now we are in the area of right hand side R H S right hand side and we are testing nested models, okay? That's the topic. So let's say we want to test the cap M model against the Farman Friends 3 factor model. Okay? So let's say under the null hypothesis in this case, because the cap M is nested in the 3 factor model, under the, under the null hypothesis, we say the cap M, the model that is nested, cap M is correct. Null hypothesis is cap M is correct. Under the alternative hypothesis, H1, we say the three factor, three factor thumb and branch model is correct. Which implies, of course, that the cap M, cap M is not correct. Yeah? So one hypothesis, cap M is correct. Alternative hypothesis, Thumb and Friends, three factor model is correct, the cap M is not correct. Let's say again we have the same setup, we have two test assets, okay. So we have two alphas, so if the cap M is correct on the null hypothesis, then we would say that the alpha had 1 and the alpha had 2 are equal to 0, yeah? so both are equal to 0, yeah? and the alternative hypothesis H1 would imply either that the alpha at 1 is unequal to 0 and or alpha hat 2 is unequal to 0. And how would we now set up this test? So we know that those variable or the factor that is in common, that is the market factor. Yeah? So the market factor is in common in the three factor model and in the cat M model. So what we have to do is we have to regress those factors or variables that are in the, in the uh, alternative model but not in the cap M, on the cap M. So those factors that are in the three factor model but not in the cap M are obviously the uh, size factor S and B and the value factor H and L. Okay? So what we have to do is then we have to we have on the left hand side now as test assets, but in this case we have factors. S and V at time t, we regress it on intercept term alpha 1 plus beta 1 times the market factor. And of course, because it's a regression equation, we have also E as our disturbance term or regression residual at time t. Second, we have the H and L factor, the value factor at time t. We regress it on intercept term captured by alpha 2 plus exposure beta 2 against the market factor, which is the cap M variable, plus an error term captured by E2 at time t. 
What's the method now? How, how do we run this model? How do we estimate it? Again, it's a multiple equation model. In this case, we have two equations. So the correct method is this seemingly unrelated regression technique that you already encountered, okay? So using seemingly unrelated regression, we run this model here and we are interested in the intercept terms. Yeah? If one or both of them would be significant or not. So in case, if the cat M is the correct model, in this case, those would be simultaneously not different from zero. So we would have a chi square test, yeah? chi square test again, we have two limits of freedom, and we know already the, the corresponding value is 5.99. So if we have estimated the, uh, the test statistic, lambda hat, yeah? and lambda hat gives us a value below 5.99, this would imply that the cat m is the correct model, because the cat m is able to explain fully the size factor and the value factor simultaneously. Okay? If the test statistic would give, a value, would give us a value of larger than 5.99, this would imply, okay, the cap M is not correct because it cannot, it cannot price these two additional factors of the three-factor model. Okay? Because there is something uh, that remains unexplained. So what does it mean in mean variance space? Okay? Let's delete it here. And because this is an online course, so some lectures will be longer, and, but don't worry about it because other lectures might be shorter. So depending on how much uh, attention I pay, to different papers, you can make inference about the exam, of course. So the more I talk about this one paper, if I talk two, pap two hours about one paper and only 45 minutes about another paper, then you know already for the exam, okay, probably you will ask more questions for that paper. Okay, so okay. But what does the result that we just discussed uh, mean in terms of mean variance space? So you know from uh, <laughs> I almost, had, almost would say elementary school, but it's just the undergraduate studies. Yeah? We have this sigma and return. Yeah? So we have the uh, expected return and we have the, the sigma, so the mean variance space. And you know from the undergraduate studies, yeah, we have this efficient frontier. Yeah? And we know, okay, if we have risk free rate, let's say the risk free rate is here somewhere, uh, then we can plot here. The, the line, and whenever we have here this tangency portfolio, so this guy here, uh, this would be basically the uh, efficient portfolio or the market portfolio. Okay, so if this is our market portfolio, let's call it, let's denote it as NKT. So, and if those two parameters that we just tested, the alpha 1 and the alpha 2, when we regress the size factor on the cap M and the value factor on the cap M and the alphas are um, not different from zero, which means that the cap M can fully explain these two risk factors, this would mean adding these risk factors to this portfolio here would not increase the mean variance frontier. And so we can just we can we, we, in this case we could just leave them out, okay? So, but if alpha one and alpha two or either one of them or both of them would be significant and larger than zero, this would imply that the cap M cannot price these these two additional risk factors correctly, and this would mean okay if we add those risk factors. In the, into the set of, of factors of, 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 uh, of the factor portfolio, this would increase the mean variance frontier. So in this case, if we then add a size and value, it would look like this. 
Yeah. So the mean variance frontier, the optimal portfolio, would be then here somewhere. Okay. This is the 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 idea that is behind them. Okay. So whenever the test gives you that, yeah, when, it, when you have a re reject all hypothesis and the uh, additional risk factors are not explained by this uh, model under the null hypothesis, it means, okay, if you add these additional risk factors to, to the model, it increases the mean variance frontier. So if you would use basically, if you would test the five-factor model against the three-factor model, everything is straightforward. This is the same procedure basically. Just that you then have this, uh, uh, the, the investment factor, or you would regress the investment factor on the three risk factors of the three-factor model, and simultaneously the profitability factor. Yeah? And then you would again, you would have two intercept terms, and then you would basically uh, test if those uh, intercept terms are simultaneously different from zero or not. It's a little bit different case if you test the random factor, so if you test the six-factor model against the five-factor model. So how does this look like yeah. in the Farmer and French um, uh, paper choosing factors? The momentum factor is denoted as u and d uh, times t, so up minus down u and d, which means that you are invest in stocks that have